And we're live. Hello and welcome to another live demonstration. If you're in the chat, just say hi. Or if you've got any questions, Gary might do a call out. And so I can say hi to you face to face as it was. Well, uh, Amanda already says hello. Oh, hello, Amanda. Thank you for joining in. Amanda regularly joins in. It's really nice um, for her to do that for me. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the Liquitex basic acrylics. So this is the basic range and I've got the set of 24, I'm not using all the colours, but I found myself using quite a few colours for this painting of a cupcake. I also decided to do a few different techniques. So the first one I'm going to do is a technique which possibly you may not think about. It may be um, you actually do this, but throw um, the, they're called skins, away. But actually, this is a, it's called an easy peel palette. So it does peel, I've done some peeling. The acrylic needs to be quite thick to be able to peel. If it gets thinner, you just need to scratch it off. But I've used that technique to create these great little additions for the cupcake. So they're ones I've done before because I need to let it dry, but I'll show you how I did them. Use, hopefully I've got enough color. because they're quite small tubes and I have done a few of those and a very little bit of burnt sienna because it's easier to add the stronger colour than it is to take it away. So what colour was that? Because that's actually a really nice colour. Unbleached titanium. So an, an off-white cream. I'm looking for that biscuit colour. Probably do need a little bit more. And when I'm mixing acrylics, another good tip is to use a painting knife like I'm doing now. Um, because you're then not pushing pigment into the ferrule here. It, even though you clean them, you may find that it builds up. If So by not mixing, um, you're not pushing it in there. So. I use a painting knife as well for painting, so it's actually quite a useful tool. A little bit more. Mix it. It's a bit better, a bit more biscuity. That's about the right colour. Maybe a little bit more burnt sienna. So I won't be using this one because it I usually leave them for a couple of days to dry. Just because it may feel dry on the outside, but still underneath and inside, they're not quite dry. That looks nice. So let's load it into one area and pick up a big scoop. And then drop it on and then all I do is I just create the shape. Round bit of the face, pick up any, drop that in. So. And it does slightly self level, I mean, it just it will depend on the um, acrylic. This is, I would say, medium viscosity. It, you still can see some of the raised texture. I'm just making sure I'm taking some of this really thick area over because, like I say, if it does get too thin, it is a little bit more difficult to 
lift off. You can do it on glass or perspex, anything that I would test um, beforehand, but anything that allows you just to peel the acrylic away. So let's put some ears on, see if I can pick any from here. Just use the shape of the knife. Now I did put, try and put antlers on, but they got too thin. And I've looked, looked at the biscuit and it didn't have antlers anyway, so. Okay. There you go. Clean that. And a great thing about using paint enough, it's so easy to clean. Um, my black. Now you can wait for this to dry before you put these details on, but I haven't got the time. And I can show you, you can do it also while it's wet, if you're just careful. Eyes on. That's better, that one eye is bigger, so let's put some more in here. Nice black eyes, and then you can put the mouth on. It's a very light touch, just picking up on the surface of that wet paint. Now for a nose, and all I did was just go that down a bit so it's not quite as raised okay so and then that dries and you can peel it off I used my painting knife and, and went underneath gently and you get one of these I do the same for the holly and that was really easy to be honest I just put I should do it here a blob of color there Blob of colour there. Another blob there. Another blob there. Again, just mix. I'm actually mixing them together and I'm not going to mix them very evenly because then I get the different colours and just drag it out. And if you didn't know, holly, this holly must have been from lower down on the holly tree because the holly further down on the tree where animals can eat is prickly and further up it will not have these spikes on it. So a tree, holly tree can also decide whether or not it has spiked leaves because if deer are starting to eat from it, it's usually deer that will eat from a holly, they can actually change and create spiked leaves in the um, area where the animal can eat. So it can adapt, it knows when. It's a protection thing, which I thought was really clever, because all I know about holly is it's spiky because I was making a reef the other day and it's very spiky. But actually to be able to adapt its leaves, 
There we go, nice and thick. And then again, really easy to do the berry. There's blob of colour. Okay, done. So, like I say, let those dry. I would say a couple of days. And then peel them off. There you go. You get these really nice little skins. There's actually a technical name for them. So, that's what I did first before I went on to the cupcake. Now, my first issue was actually creating that colour for the icing because it's actually quite a difficult colour to replicate. You think it's just red and yellow, it's an orange of some sort, but I found it quite difficult to actually get that colour. So I will get a close colour. Like I say, I often say this, your, your photo is a starting point, it's a reference. It's not necessarily People have, may not have seen it. This is actually created by my very talented sister-in-law. She does some fabulous Christmas um, cakes with her kids. And this is one of them. Right. Need to do plenty. And what you can do is if you really are wanting to see if it's close you can do this just see and that's actually quite close you can do it on the this is just a simple copy and you can get um plenty of those so that should work fine and i'm just going to use my painting knife because i want a much more textured finish i'm going to plot out where the folds of the icing are. They're not quite, I've done icing before and it's that really swirly one and that was quite easy to represent, but this is quite flat to icing. And it's actually quite difficult to get all the different nuances of shape, but just putting it on. Now I have sketched this out quite strongly, just so I can hopefully see where I'm going. So this is a lighter area. And then underneath there, it's dark, so let's just do this bit. And it is kind of like icing a okay, cake with the painting knife. Just creating those textures. This is push it upwards, I should get that edge. Push it up there. Push it that way. I haven't completely mastered using a painting knife. I see people with absolutely amazing skill just can put it down and it makes amazing marks but with practice you will learn how to manipulate the blade so it gives you the shape you want. And it is a light touch which Possibly is why I haven't got it. And then if I push it, I know if I push it up, I'll get the edge there. Okay. See if I can smooth that round. 
putting it in okay. so this bit has gone over there and there and I think there's another fold here and yes I'm leaving the white gaps because again that just helps me plot out where I want the colour to go so a bit more red and that's why I left this red on this side I can now think about maybe some darker areas just at the bottom there it's quite light there but it does go darker here it's getting these subtle shades is quite a challenge so I think I'm going to put a little bit of no I don't want blue on I'm going to go for the darker red Decided I'm going to do that after the lights. Now, normally I don't put the lights in first. I put them in um, at the end. But for this, I struggle to find because the tonal values are so subtle. I actually struggle to find the darks. So I'm going to put the lights on. That seemed to help bring out the shapes I was looking for in the cupcake. That one is quite light there. See how it's mixing with the orangey red colour as well. Up the light there. Little bit under here. It waves over here. So that if I put some at the bottom here, I might be able to. Um, trying to work out this fold. This fold comes round here. So just look at all those beautiful textures coming out already. So that darker red now. And here. What's that do there? It's a little medium red. Okay. 
And I'm going to make this curve here from that round. Let's fill in these areas. I left white with some dark. It looks swirly. Want to push it up I've just made sure I've put the paint on the other side of the blade that's dark so let's see I've got black on my um, palette I want to now just very subtly darken some areas If I go too far, I'm going to lose some colour. And what I'm going to do is leave it. I think it still looks swirly and come back. So that was just using the painting knife, using texture. I'm going to use a brush and create the cake. I'm just going to stipple it on. So I want a much smoother finish, a, a different texture. These brushes take a lot of punishment to be fair. So you can stipple and you can spread the hairs, but a good clean will bring them back. So, a little bit of blue, so burnt sienna and usually ultramarine will give you a really nice grey. <coughs> but brown and blue will give you some nice interesting greys. Next, the dark brown which I've got is burnt umber. Use that. Add a bit of texture and look at the shadows. It's acrylic, I can go back over. Areas which I feel need altering or adjusting, I can go back in. This is a great thing with acrylic. Make sure my cupcake goes right up to the icing because they're not separate so you don't want them to be separate it's dark under here where the icing is on the cake but it's actually quite light here Perfect colour. Right, blue, I think it needs 
might as a bit green, but definitely it's darkening under there. the edge as well. Let's go in with some white. Let's dry my brush off and create my spikes and I can just some light on. Well, I stipple the more they blend in a little bit if they're a bit too harsh because the paint underneath is still a bit damp. Okay, all right. Now, I'm going to go on to the E, um, what they called cupcake cases. cases, that's the word. Again, I'm going to go in with the painting knife. So, I loaded the wrong side. Light on there. Actually, I think I'm going to mix, make a dark green because I want to do the these areas inside a dark. So if I can put those on, I've got no problem using a ready-made green. You can mix them. You can learn to mix them, but. What you'd get if you're using a ready-made colour is consistency. So you, with mixing greens, um, colours will change every time you mix it, a yellow and the blue. But if you're using a ready-made green, it's the same all the time. So adding some purple, so purple and green are going to darken each other up and that's another way to make a grey. You'll make a green grey this way. That's a nice colour. And yes, it looks a struggle using a knife, but it actually just gives you some wonderful textures. Normally I could move the painting around or move it so I can get to a good angle but it's taped down so sorry <laughs> and I know I say it all the time but Gary needs to tape it down for filming but I uh, then I actually realize how much I move while painting I either move the painting or move myself so you have to adapt for filming. Okay. Uh, where's that dark? Yes, it may look a bit of a mess at the moment, but it will come together.
So go in with the green. So right on this edge where the cupcake comes out. It's lighter. I really don't mind picking up the colours that are in there because I think that's part of the fun of this. Okay. Darker areas. I'm not going to do it neat and As it starts to build up, it gets from that really scruffy stage to actually something that you were looking for. Okay. Back with the knife. Some white, we'll just top it along the edge. That's dipped in, that's the nut edge on that one. And that one. And And then there's some edges on here. And just see how suddenly those little touches kind of, you go, ah, I see that now. And I think people do get frustrated at this messy stage but just keep adding a little and you can make it come together so let's just finish off just, just have some rhinestone there and a bit of colour I think it probably has a little bit of, that's a bit too bright, so let's draw it down by mixing it with the colour that's on there. Don't know what they are, I can't see, but with a bit of colour, a little bit of, hmm, that's beauties. I don't want too much because it would take away. I think while I'm doing the darks, I'll do the black. And again, no problem using a pre made black. I may mix it with other colours just slightly so it's not as flat. But that's what it's there for. I'm using filbert brushes, which are slightly rounded. So they have a flat ferrule and a rounded edge. That just really helps with some of the nice curves. Go 
Okay. Come on, come on. Okay, and remember the shadow is the cupcake is actually going to be touching the shadow. So I'm just going to take some of this dark in. Just so it doesn't look so stark. That's working okay. That's worked quite well. It's not clean and crisp, but that was not what I was looking for. I wanted to show different textures. Hmm, that's pretty much nearly there, I would think, on the cupcake. Maybe use my brush just to neaten up some of these edges. I don't want to take away some of those lovely marks that got inside. I think I'm not going to fiddle too much in there because I know what I'll do and it will not end prettily. You do have to talk to yourself and tell yourself, no, you know what you should do. That's probably why I can paint and talk because I'm always talking to myself, telling myself what should work and what shouldn't. Right, I think I'm going to leave that and go on to the background. What colour do I want for the background? I want a light blue because I think it will enhance both the green and the red with complementary colours and everything. Take it down a level. Let's clean my painting knife. So I'm taking the dark colour to the light colour. The reason being, it's much harder to lighten a colour than it is to darken. So I oh, will take it. I'm going to put just the neat blue on to start with. And you notice I don't mix well. Don't mix my colours well because I want them to mix on the surface. Now this, actually, I haven't said, this is the SAA acrylic practice paper. So I don't know if you can see the textures. You may not have seen it when I was doing that, but you can see the texture. It's got very much a texture like a canvas. and he put some um, yellow in and that's again you can use that texture to bring out interesting marks in your painting if you wanted to or like I have done here I've made the paint thick enough that it actually covers in the background, I can definitely use this texture. This is the difficult part, it's just going round. I'll just spread it over. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I do that sometimes. I'm predominantly right handed, but as you've taken my paper down, I can't move. So it's actually a, a good experience and an interesting thing to do is changing hands because you feel, oh no, I'm not going to be able to control in the same way. And you don't control in the same way, absolutely dominant hand, but some of the marks you make are less controlled. So yeah, I do sometimes swap. You may see it in other demonstrations I do. Oh, you definitely don't need to Right, let's keep that quite light. So, pick up the white. Go round. You could do quite a smooth background. That, again, would add contrast to the textures in the icing. Because 
So there's quite a lot of movement. just really satisfying to be honest it picks up really quickly right. go but now I've put the background on I can just finish off very carefully with some light actually nearly out of white now Now for the fun part. So these are still drying, like I said. I've done some previously. And because the paint's still wet, you could put some glue or some acrylic paint because it's actually quite adhesive. I think it's going to stick. Okay. And also means you can change where you want them to be okay. and then for the might need a little bit of wet paint like I say acrylic is quite adhesive so go okay. done Final bit of white, just to edge the icing. I know it's got a dusting on it as well, which I'm not going to do. Oh, it's still got blue. Clean off. fine I will just I'm just fiddling now so there you go a cupcake in acrylic using a few different techniques creating skins using the painting knife to create texture and adding detail see how it gave those nice clean lines and then using the brush to create a different texture in the bun so I hope you enjoyed that and join me again um, for some more demonstrations, what I was going to say was join us again, if you remember, for a workshop with Vic Beercroft on Wednesday. Beercroft on Wednesday. So uh, you can join us then, and I'm looking forward to it because it's been a while since we've had a workshop. Um, and join me again soon. Thank you. <laughs>